used the Knight logo as part of their corporate stars and stripes. They object to what they see as the world takeover by mega brands. Although I can't help noticing that not everyone is quite on message. Logo is funny, funny situation. Why are you wearing a brand, what's, Kevin? What's all that about? Is that, are you being ironic or something? Very, very ironic. Are you, what's... Kevin's a volunteer, so he's in training, so... He's not been through the program. No, no, exactly. He's not had his mind changed. I wanted to get their take on these mega budget ad campaigns. Well, I think that the power of, of, uh, of brands, especially mega brands, comes from their ability to build a kind of a nuclear glow around their brand. And they spend uh, days, weeks. I used to be in the advertising industry, so I know. The, they, they spend sometimes months and they, sp and they pay some marketing whiz kids, you know, uh, hundreds of thousands, even millions of dollars to decide what emotion can we take and, and put around our brand? Is it going to be empowerment? Is it going to be homeliness? Is it going to be love? Is it going to be sexiness? Uh, the Nike brand is a good example of that. They, they have this, <coughs> this nuclear glow that says empowerment. You wear Nikes and you're going to be stronger. You're going to be cooler. You're going to be better in some way. And, and that is the secret of their power. The fact that they, they have managed to tap into uh, an emotion that is central to our lives and they've been able to place their brand right there where it hurts if you like. <laughs> yeah. and it goes way beyond billboards and glossy tv ads at the school i saw the power of another method of placing your brand where it hurts some fit city fans saw Tevez wearing Nike boots. They go, they beg their mums for Nike boots, and, uh, and then they go to school and go, "I'm wearing the same boots as Tevez." Right, I see. So, getting your boots on the feet of the right people is especially important for this age group. What sort of person do you think would would wear Adidas? You know, Messi. Like, he wears Adidas. The um, Adi, the Adi is the boot. I think it's time to go play with the big boys. Frankie Young, sexy again. Chevy, I can do. I'm on my way to the headquarters of Adidas. Uh, number one, Adidas La Strata. The roots of Adidas lie in the Dassler Brothers Shoe Factory. Founded in 1928 by brothers Adi Dassler, a brilliant sports shoemaker, and Rudy Dassler, a clever businessman. Dassler Brothers survived the Second World War by making boots for the German army. But in 1946, they fell out and set up rival shoe businesses. Puma from Rudy Dassler and Adidas from Adi Dassler. They never spoke again. Ah, oh, look, factory outlet, Adidas, there on the horizon. And look, just over there, there's a massive Puma building. Apparently for years, even the workers didn't speak to each other. I'm not exactly a sportsman, but I reckon I could be good for Adidas. See, what I could do if I was in Dawson, I could come down here, get some pictures taken, uh, go around the running track, like that, you know, maybe have a party with some other celebrities or something, and uh, that would be great business, great PR for Adidas. These are the different brands they also have in the Adidas group. Adidas, Adidas, Adidas and Adidas. Reebok, CCM, TaylorMade, Adidas, Ashworth and Rockport. And that type of cheese. Brand I'm being taken to the brand center where Adidas train their employees. There's a big thing up there that we can't film. It's totally secret and uh, commercially sensitive. But it's amazing. Really happy. It goes on and on. <sighs> Clever. <sighs> their in house historian has agreed to take me to a room even many of the employees don't know exists. Why don't you try to open the door? I feel a bit like uh, Indiana Jones. Is this where the, the tomb of yeah. Adi Dashler? Try it out. Find out. Oh my goodness. <sighs> this room contains a shoe with more history than any other shoe I've ever met. <laughs> would you I would love to get the, the, the gloves on if we, we show that. 1936 was the year of Adolf Hitler's Berlin Olympic Games. But Hitler's plans to demonstrate Aryan racial supremacy were upset by a black American athlete, Jesse Owens. This is one of 
the shoes that were worn by Jesse Owens in the 1936 Olympics. Addy Dassler had spotted the publicity value of Owens before the Olympics. And so he talked to Jesse and we know the rest of the history. That's Lauren's last jump. Also 7.87 meters. New European record. And now the amazing Owens again. When Jesse Owens won four gold medals wearing Adidasless shoes, the company not yet called Adidas hit pay dirt. And it was a major boost for the business. They produced, after that, a lot of shoes for different sports. That is an actual pair that Jesse Owens wore to win gold at the 1936 Olympics. Gosh. Have you got the left? And over the years, Adidas have pushed this idea of endorsements way beyond sport. You know, they have a seeding program, various sort of, you know, people in and around sort of, you know, various cultures, you know, music artists, you know, street artists. They try to target and identify those key players, get them wearing it, and then get it seen out and about. Yeah. I've got a meeting with the man responsible for giving free Adidas gear to trendy people. I'm sure he'll recognise a trendsetter when he sees one. I, I look upon Adidas as an iconic, credible brand, so we wanted to associate ourselves with iconic, credible people. Yes. So how do you keep it fresh then? How do you make sure that you're endorsing the people that, you know, younger people than you will be interested in? A good example would be probably about 2003, a friend of mine had adopted a young lad and I went round there and him and his mates were talking about MCs and DJs and I had absolutely no clue about any of these people they were talking about. Don't you know, yo, don't you, don't you, yo. you know, what they were listening to now has kind of turned, you know, has, has been labelled as grime. Who wants to be a millionaire? Who wants to be a millionaire? And so I made it my business to find out about what it was that they were listening to and who the people were within that scene. And when we started to provide products to those kids, a lot of those kids couldn't believe that a corporation was even aware of who they were. A lot of these kids that we're talking about are now, you know, having number one records. And Were they actually wearing Adidas before you started? Well, not really. No blue suede shoes, just my Adidas trainers, but I'm still rock and roll. I mean, are you looking for anybody, you know, maybe in the TV business? For example, BBC Three, I don't know if you, you, you've watched BBC Three. Very cool demographic. Wouldn't it be a good idea to maybe get involved with uh, somebody who the people on BBC Three think is cool? 